Jesus and you taught him something. Two lines go down and two lines high. Then it will be more sweet. Can you do like this? First down and then two up. up. Like you should do, do Kirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, in the same line, you should do. Hare Krishna in this tune. You have any question? Yeah. No. And these, oh, there are so many seniors. Like they are, I honor them. But they are so humble that they are sitting there. You should be humble so much. And give so much honor to seniors. Then you can go up. You should learn. All should learn. At the time of taking Prasadam. At the time of also Kirtan. At the time of <coughs> sitting anywhere. We should try to always give honor to all. Uh, in the morning, when we are doing parikrama, hmm, seniors should go forward and junior graduate not to disturb anyone, not to disturb. Always keeping onward. If you are not giving honor and you are not humble, you cannot progress. Juniors should also give honor and seniors. 
they will teach them. With, oh, like son, like Yamuna brother, huh? with love and affection. But they should be taught all these rules and regulations. Always try to <coughs> respect seniors, always. But seniors should see also that if anyone, being shisha of shisha, but he has so much in what? No, no. If he is qualified, he has given all his worldly things, and he knows all the transcendental truths, practice in bhakti yoga, and he is serving so much Vaishnava and Guru, then he should also respect him. Always. Not gathering. In that way, this way, we can increase our politics. You know, Swamiji, priest everywhere in the world. Pujapa Siddhar Maharaj was sitting in Navadvip. And how he used to give him honor, you know? Now disciples perhaps not knowing because they are concealing these facts. He has so much honor for my Gurudev. So much. To his seniors always. Like Siksha Guru. Like I honor my God brothers, like my Siksha Guru, to, to become Maharaj, Bhaman Maharaj, to others, they are to seniors. They respect so much, but I always. Pujapas, Swami Maharaj was in the line of Vaishnava, Guru. So he must respect, he used to give respect to Pujapas, Siddhar Maharaj, Bhakti Vlastik Maharaj and all others. So we should know all the etiquettes. This is Vaishnava etiquette. <coughs> Agyana Simiran Darsya Gyanan Jana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tashmai Shri Gurave Bancha Kalpataru Bhasya Kripashin Dhrubhaivacha Patitanam Pāvanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurai Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Itadaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhakta Tadabhakta Yang Prabhrijan Tamanupetam Apeta Kirtyam Dvai Pāyano Viraka Tarya Jihau Putri Titan Maitaya Tarvo Vinedu Tan Sarvabhu Taridayam Munimantus Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Najgami Tvaya Vina Iti Bhigyan Radhe Tamne Mahal You know, Sanatan Goswami, also you have perhaps heard the name of Jagadananda Prabhu. Jagadananda Prabhu, from boyhood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was in Naudip Lila also. And he was like Satyabhama, having some man. Hmm? So, Sanatan Goswami was the Prime Minister of any Muslim king and he was so intelligent, learner of all Shastra. <coughs> In Puri once he came and then he met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then he returned to Vrindavan. Jagdananda was there. 
He wanted to, chai, to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Oh, he wanted to serve so much. Sometimes he brought, anyone brought a vessel of, full vessel, full pot of, very fragrant Ayurveda oil. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes he used to find in Krishna consciousness. So he brought with great care. He gave, gave it to Govinda that, oh, yes, he put on the head of Mahaprabhu, oh, some oil thing. Then Govinda told to Mahaprabhu, that Jagadananda has ordered me to give, put some oil on your hands. This is Ayurvedic, very powerful, like medicine. Mahaprabhu told, very what, humble, humbly, that take this, what, this oil to Jagannath temple and give it to for Deepak, for land. So, he could not give, put the oil on the head of Mahaprabhu. Next day, Jagadananda asked to Govinda that, have you put this oil on his head? He told us, I could not. Why? Oh, he ordered me to give this oil to Jagannath. And by thus, oh, I will have that thing. He became very upset and he took that oil, pot, and in the front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he uh, smashed and all water, and uh, all water here and there. And he became so angry and he went from there. He went to his bhajan koti and he Lock the door. How are you, can say? Lock. Anyhow. One day, two days, he was crying, but not coming to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu thinking that, oh, he has some anger to me because I'm not accepted. And that is why he. One day, th two, third, become third day. Then he, on fourth day in morning he went and he knocked the door. Oh Jagdananda, oh Jagdananda. But he was not replying, only weeping, weeping, weeping. Mahaprabhu told that for three days I have not taken anything. Empty stomach. And now I am so much hungry. I am going to take bath in ocean. And very soon I am coming. Be prepared of all kinds of preparations for me. And telling he went away. And he went to see and took bath. And he again returned after one hour. In the meantime, Jagadananda, oh, he took bath, changed his clothes, and then began to prepare so many kinds of Vegetable, rice, dal, chapati, and so many things. Vegetable. In a uh, uh, chutney of tamarind leaves, so many things. Uh, about more than um, no, uh, 50, 56, more than. And he brought a very big banana leaf, two, three. And he, preparation. Govind was with Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu told, uh, he requested Govind that tell Mahaprabhu to take prasadam. Mahaprabhu told that I can take. Oh, that should be two seeds and two leaves. And I will see it with Jagadananda. And we will take prasadam together. And if he is not taking, then I am going. Empty stone. Then Jagadanan told to, not directly uh, take
telling to Mahaprabhu, not direct talk. He told to Jagadam, um, Govinda. Govinda, Govinda tell Mahaprabhu that he should take gladly and after that when he will finish, oh, then we will both take together remnant of Mahaprabhu. Then he told to Mahaprabhu, you should take, he will take after you. So only remnant he will take. Then Mahaprabhu took prasadam. And then after that, oh, that remnant was divided into two and uh, it turned out. Then he became happy, but he was not coming directly to, to speak Mahaprabhu anything. Even there was some, uh, what, some smell of ma. He went again after two, three days to Mahaprabhu and told that, I am going to Vrindavan. Please order me. I want your permission. Mahaprabhu said, why you are going? Oh, for so many long time I wanted to go with you, but you could not to take me with you. So now I want to go and to take Darshan. I, I want to be there and to suffer Radha Krishna Kanyu. Mahaprabhu told you can go, but not for huh? long, time. long time. Go and see and return back. Don't climb on the top of Govardhan. You are not qualified to be there. <coughs> you can quarrel there. You can see the rules and regulations. Yeah, Brajbasi is not taking bath or taking bath or what he is doing. So then you will just according to your mentality. So you make make some offenses. So don't be there. You should return back. He went anyhow. But when he left Puri and he came to border under a tree, then he was lamenting so much. Oh, I, why I did so mistake? I cannot remain, I cannot be life without Mahaprabhu. I have done wrong. Should I go, return? But how can I return? Then what will I answer? And he was in dilemma, what to do, not to do. One day, two days, he was there, weeping, weeping. Anyhow, he consoled his mind. Anyhow, I should go. Then he went to Vrindavan. And he met Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami told that you should be here and see with me all the pastime places. One day, Sanatan Goswami was out of uh, his bhajan kuti and he was cooking. He never took any what? Madhukari. Madhukari. But I am not qualified for Madhukari. Sanatan Goswami, Rup Goswami, they are qualified. I cannot. I cannot digest. We cannot digest Madhukari. We are not qualified. So, he was there and cooking. And what became? Sanatan Goswami took any saffron cloth from anyone. And he did like this. And he returned. Then he, oh, he was cooking. And the pot was on, on fire. Stove. Stove. It was so hot. It was khichari. It was doing takbak. Takbak, you know? Why? So, Sanatan Goswami, uh, he asked Sanatan Goswami, Oh, oh, you are very faithful to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? From where did this collector, the, this cloth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Hmm? He told simply that it is not of Mahaprabhu, it is uh, of any Mayabadi here. And he gave me an idea. Oh, of Mayabadi, he at once took that pot and he... <laughs> Then Chaitanya, uh, Sanatana Goswami became very humble and he was just smiling and telling, Oh, I was testing you. I know that you have so much faith on Mahaprabhu. 
so much faith. Hmm? And you cannot be a any others the saffron cross of Mayabadi. Hmm? You are so attached to Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Mahaprabhu repeats you it, what is me it meaning? Uh, he loves you so much. So he gets you Madhur Jaras of rebuking. Hmm? And to me, Sanatan Goswami told. Oh, he said, oh, Sanatan Goswami is so honorable person, he is so high class of devotee, he is superior to all. So this is like Nimbaras. Nimbaras? The juice of Nimbaras. One Sanatan Goswami was in, again in Puri, and uh, Sanatan Goswami was telling himself that, I am so low, I am so wretched person. He has some itches coming in the way, some mosquitoes has gotten, so so much juice from his body was coming. Pus, very bad smelling. And Mahaprabhu, what he used to do? To embrace him. And Sanatana Goswami you will be there, don't touch Prabhu, don't touch Prabhu. But yeah. then. Sanatana Goswami met with Jagdana and then told, what should I do? Chaitanya hmm? Mahaprabhu always wants to embrace me and I am so was wretched and this disease and what coming? What's coming and Mahaprabhu touches me. What should I do? Should I return to Vrindavan? Yes, you should go to Vrindavan. Don't be here. Otherwise Mahaprabhu will touch you and he, will, he may have some disease, so you should quickly. <laughs> Mahaprabhu heard this and told to Jagadan, Oh Jagai, oh, you are a boy of only two days and you are instructing, you are being instructor of Sanatan Goswami, how he is superior and you have dared to give some what, intelligence and advice. Don't think you like that you are so, of two days only, boy only, having no intelligence. He gave that. Oh, we should honor. Especially those who are pure devotees, they should be humble and try to give honor to This is only way to progress in Krishna consciousness. <coughs> now we should come to our point. Oh, now it is seven. Come to with me in Vrindavan or Mathura. Hmm? Be concentrate your minds. No, you know that all the human beings in the whole world, ever even you are in America, the richest person now it is in the whole world. And you are making so much money, your house is full of all kinds of <coughs> comforts and everything. Very, very beautiful wife you have. And when she becomes uh, of one year, two years, you can divorce and again you pick up. <laughs> and very good children qualify. Everything is okay. Having two, three, four, five dogs, no harm. <laughs> so you. But even there are so many problems. All are suffering. Especially those who are rich more suffering than in world. So in this world, <coughs> anyone is not happy. And this life is full of miseries, problems, <coughs> difficulties, sorrow, suffering. And old 
sadness also and so many things. Rogues, full of rogues, diseases. In this world there is none who has never tested any kinds of suffering, sorrows or problems. I think among you there are so many rich persons. But any of you can raise hand that I have never had any problem without problem and I am always all, all time I am happy. Can anyone tell? Oh, today in morning you are telling that I am sick. <laughs> I remember. I remember. So, in this world there are none. Whether he can be king, prime minister, president or anything. Only if there is any devotee surrendered to Krishna, he may be. But he will tell, I am not happy. He never will tell. What he will tell? Oh, very big problem. Why I am alive? Why I am not dying? Because I have no darshan of Krishna. So in this world, anyone is not happy. So all the jivas, they want happiness. There is, there are so many sufferings, problems in this world, and all are unhappy. That is why all want pure happiness. But it is absurd in this Maya Sansar, in this material world, anyone can have happiness. That is why all the Vedas has told. Sukham me bhuyat, dukham me ma bhuta. All the Vedas are telling that we should always be happy. Always happiness comes to come to me, and suffering should not come. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it has been told, karma nyarahmana dukha tai sukhayaja. Pashet pakam viparyasam mithuni chahirna. In whole world, all are trying to have happiness. They want to be happy. For this, they try themselves are mixing with wife and husband, sometimes whole family, sometimes like. Sanjukta Rashtra, assembly of all the United Nations. They try, but they cannot check wars, they cannot check anything, because they are themselves having so many problems. If they have so many problems, how they can solve other problems? They cannot. So it is told that we are trying for happiness. But our sufferings are so strong. They come and they keep their feet on our head and for sadly what? We'll have to test for sadly. We are bound to test them. Can you have any remedy to escape from old days? Never. From death? Never. So all want that I should be happy. But only one thing will do, all want. But all are dukhi, all are suffering. But it cannot be told that always they are unhappy and they have no a little, say, a piece of happiness. Oh, they have. Hmm? But that is happiness is like a very little and at, at once they pass away. Again, second, always problems, problems coming, suffering coming like waves. 
We say that, oh, this problem we will, we will solve and we will be happy. In the meantime, you are saying, oh, more bigger problem coming. So we are bound to this. Something coming from when you are married, at once you are saying that, oh, at the day of marriage, oh, very beautiful, very beautiful. And next day we will see, she will want some ornaments and so many things. Or she will first control that you should not love anyone. If you have any girlfriend, you should. Oh, he cannot do. And so many problems comes. So in this world there is no pure happiness. But we anyhow we want pure happiness. And what is pure happiness? There is happiness, but not in this world. And that is called Brahmanand. What a Jew can test in himself. He, if he can attain salvation, then he can test Brahmananda. No distress at all. But Brahmanand is also not pure not any affirmative, negative way. Like, what is negative? What negative? If a man has caught anyone and he was going to <coughs> talk, eh? choke his, then he was crying, shame me, shame me, shame me. And he was about to die. Eh? And he was pushing. <coughs> but anyone came and said to him, and then he stood up and oh, now I'm saying. <laughs> so this is salvation and this is Brahman and life. Not positive anything. But if you are serving Krishna, really that is happiness. Otherwise don't. Krishna is embodiment of Ananda. I am Anandam, I am Brahma. If you are not following, serving, chanting, remembering Krishna, you cannot be happy in any way. So this is called not Brahma Ananda, this is called praying, love and affection to Krishna. And these are so many various of kinds. Eh? So he wants happiness, but he does not know what is happiness. Really this to serve Krishna and the love and affection of gopis, serving Krishna and they are having, having so much <coughs> ananda, ananda pure. So really we want like such love and affection, but we don't know what is that. But we want to happiness like such. Hmm? Oh, if anyone wants to be happy, Krishna has transformed into Shastra. So in Shastra is written that if you will follow my instructions, you can have that kind of love and affection. So Shastra has told. And in all Shastra, hmm, Srimad Bhagavatam is Amal Shastra. To whom you can rely and believe. He cannot cheat you because Srimad Bhagavatam is the embodiment of Krishna Himself. Hmm. For in all Shastra it has been written that if you will serve Krishna, then you will really be happy. If you are chanting, remembering Krishna, then by doing bhakti to Krishna, Bhagavan Krishna, Swami Bhagavan Krishna, 
will be happy and then you must be happy. But Srimad Bhagavat first telling, he is telling some difference. What? Hmm? Srimad Bhagavat is telling, Oh, all jivas, you have no power, no, you have no qualification that you can serve Krishna. Never you can. You are like powerless. You cannot serve. You cannot call Krishna. Never you can call. All Shastra has told that you should remember and call Krishna. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam. Kalo Naste, Naste, Naste. It has told in Vishnu Prana or other Purana, not in Srimad Bhagavata. So all Shastra I told that you should do bhajan to Krishna. But Srimad Bhagavad, what is telling? Oh, you cannot call Krishna. Hmm? Oh, Krishna is descending to call you. He is so merciful. Out of mercy, he has descended to this world. You cannot go there and serve. <coughs> Can you go to Vrindavan, <coughs> Gokul, Naudi, Dham there, Shreddi? You cannot go. You cannot call him. But Krishna is so, the Krishna of Srimad Bhagavatam is so merciful. He took his flow and he descended to this earth in Vrindavan and he was calling to all. Come on, come on, come on. Hmm? Oh, you should only hear from, you should give your ears, ears. Only here. Not I don't want anything. Guru, the real Guru, qualified Guru, only tells, Oh, give your ears to me. I don't want anything. Your wealth, your anything I don't want. I want your And I want to purify your ears. And by here, I will give something in your heart that you will be happy forever. Transcendental happiness will come to you. Other, there is no other process to be happy. Hmm? No. You are crying from, for Krishna, but your crying has no power. How you are crying? I am giving an example. Our crying is like this. Oh, there was a very beautiful cross, very powerful one. All the devotees were there. Hmm. And those who were speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, telling Harikatha, he was, he has so much fear. And also, long years. And it was quite, quietly, it has become white. Hmm. And he was telling like this and that. And he just was. All were attentive attentively hearing. And and old ladies, oh, he was sitting there and always weeping, 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 tears come. The Sadhu Baba who was speaking Harikatha, when it was finished the class, all went gracefully. And lady was there. He called that lady, Oh Mother, oh, you are a very high class of people. My what heart, Harikatha, touched your heart. And why you are weeping so bitterly? Then he again began to weep more and telling that, Baba, what to tell? I have a, what? Not Bakari, Bakari. Male goat. And he was so uh, strong. And he has so much beer like you, just. <laughs> Sometimes I used to give something to eat and then he happily used to eat like this. And that. So when you are telling Baba Harikatha, your 
just like my, I remember always my dad go and when you ha and have just told on a way what to do, I am waiting for that. So our calling to Krishna is like that. So, it may be some semblance, but not semblance for the bimba. Reflection. Our arti should be pure. Oh, we cannot have that kind of arti. Arti means? <coughs> Sincere prayer. Eh? Sincere prayer. Sincere prayer. Sincere prayer. With separation mode. From heart, core of heart. But Krishna has it. And that is why he descended. Oh, lakhs and lakhs, koti. Hmm? More than us, he is weeping for us. Because he is father of father of father. Beloved of beloved of beloved. He has so much love and affection for us. Oh, they are suffering so much, forgetting me. They cannot come to me. They cannot even call me, weeping bitterly. Not heart mended. So I must go to them. And that is why he descended. With his flow, his all beauty, essence of the, all the beauty he took, and he came. And he is calling us, but we are not here. Hmm? Try to realize this. Sarva Bhuta Mano Haram Jagam Kalau Bam Dishaman Oharam. Oh, he took his flow. And he was singing on, cling, and he was calling. But we cannot hear this sound also. We are not so much qualified. So we cannot go to Krishna and call. That is why Krishna came. Even in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, conjugal both they came. Only to call us. And he went here and there. And he took sannyas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu life. Hmm? So Bhagavat is telling like this. Nidam kalpata rur galitam palam sukam khad amrit dravasun hudam. Ivata Bhagavata marasamalya muhuraho rasika. Krishna became like fruit. Nidam kalpata fruit. No. Nothing, nothing. Only rasa, rasa, rasa. And he was brought by whom? in Guru Parampara. Hmm? So, Krishna has descended to this world to call, to call us. Why? Oh, don't be suffering. Hmm? Be happy. Transcendental happiness you should have hmm? and to give. But we are not qualified. Even to this, we don't want to be transcendental happy. Oh, Bhagavat is telling, Kangva Dayalum Sharanam He is asking to all others, Ved, Upanishad, Puran, Mahabharat, Ramayana, to all. Srimad Bhagavat is questioning, Kangva Dayalum Sharanam Brajit. He is asking, but none is replying. And then Srimad Bhagavat himself, Oh, Bakiyam Stanakal. Even a demon like Putana, always taking the flesh and new bloods of babies everywhere. So, this demon and went to kill Krishna. And what Krishna did? He changed his cloth, he changed his body, and he sent to Vaishnava more than that. So, we should try to serve Krishna and to hear Krishna. We should be qualified. How you can? Or throw any qualified devotee. Like Guru, devotee, same thing. You, without, you cannot go. So, all, Shastra told that all human want happiness and they want to meet with Krishna, but Bhagavad tells what? 
भगवान वंश जी यू नो ऑल्सो दैट इन ऑल शास्त्र इट हैज देन टोल्ड दैट फैन कृष्ण वेन टू मथुरा एंड गोपी वॉज फिलिंग सेपरेशन देन ऑल शास्त्र आर टेलिंग वाट दैट गोपी sent any hansa swan swan to mathura to tell their separation how they are suffering but shrimad bhagwat is telling another thing what krishna was suffering so much and he was suffering so much that he had to send his messenger understanding Gopis are not sending, but Krishna is sending because he is so merciful, so merciful. So bhakti is so much katar for Bhagwan. Katar means always suffering, always weeping, separation, feeling separation, hankering. But Sri Mat Bhagwat was telling opposite, Krishna is hankering from his devotees. always krishna always calling what oh mother mother and he is searching where my boyfriend are here all bal bal brahma has taken them and he is searching them so krishna is searching us but we are so unqualified that we cannot hear his flow we Hmm? we cannot call with her so we should try but you can only try when your heart is so empty and you have taken the shelter of any high class of devotees hmm? then krishna has come and has gone to mathura now i in the beginning i told Five or six questions. No. What questions? Braja, Brinda, Ban, Gokul, Mathura, uh, Gokul, and all other. Braja, Bhumi, is a place of so high class of love and affection. No. Brinda, Ban is himself, itself, Rasa. No. So why Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura and to Dwarka? Why? Why? He saw it as a duty, Maharaj. So there is a question that why Krishna is worshipped of Rasa himself and Vrindavan is also worshipped of Rasa. And even he left it. Secondly, if he went, if there was any cause, we 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 go anywhere for any special reason cause, and if cause is finished, we return. So if. Krishna has left Vrindavan for any special reason, a special cause. That cause should be finished, and he should return to Vrindavan. But he never returned. Oh, what is the answer of this? Anyone wants to leave a, a, a place where he receives so much love and affection, he doesn't want to. Test any l- lower kind of eh? like if you are having a rasa golla, then if anyone giving you some uh, good in India or anything, you cannot take it. You want to say rasa golla first. So why Krishna? Eh? Lover like gopis, Mother Jasoda, Nanda Baba, and others, and quickly he left 
in a day and he never returned why third question of oh, he is not coming forever but he is can come time to time what hard if anyone has gone uh, come to america from india to make some money and if money is is sufficient and that he can return if in case he is not returning but he can go to india to meet his relatives he may go so krishna why not going to meet their relatives his father and mother he should go but he is not going at all or oh, today he is sending a messenger but why not himself going he sending messenger messenger can it do the same thing what krishna can do he know that they will be not satisfied they will only be satisfied if i am going there but he sending messenger and giving what a letter to them that you should give this and this this message to them or hmm? oh, if there is so much heavy reason reason cause that means important cause or reason that he cannot go, return to them hmm? then this, there is some way that he can call all the prajabashi to mathura or dwarka there is no uh, lacking of any space so much space he can do anything he can supply all houses and boarding and everything as he gave hosted all mathura bashi so he can bring all and he will he will be in mathu in dwarka he should be in mathura and with all prajabashi why he is not bringing them oh if you want to know all the answers of all the question then you will have to go deep in shrimad bhagavatam with any high class of devotees who has sat his gurudev the devotees and he has sat bhagavatam with bhagavatam what is meaning he should sat bhagavatam with bhagavatam because the key and lock is in the hands of mahabhagavat we don't want to serve any mahabhagavatam we don't go want to give honor to all but we want that our all answers should be satisfied huh? how how it can be so krishna is so merciful he is sending his any kind of devotees oh go and tell some answer this answers so that they may be advocates like this now you are coming to our questions that answer that it is to first questions and answer why he left why he left i told one reason of prem sarova krishna is so worried that gopis when with me they fell so much preparation mood for future and they became like lifeless in prem vaichitya in mahabhav in what prem vaichitya arika unmat adibya unmat you cannot imagine all these things and feeling so much separation mode burning in fire of separation so kids wanted that 
if I am out of Vrindavan, they will feeling separation and in separation mode they will meet me. In dream, even, in, in, in any way. They will see Tamal and they will embrace like Krishna, that, oh, direct, I, we are meeting with you. And then they will be happy, or they will take something, and they will... So I must be. Secondly, he is telling that it is true that anyone wants to be there where he is plenty of ānanda, eh? happiness. He don't want to go to any place where there is less happiness and less love and affection. But this is not the nature of Krishna, Supreme Personality of Krishna, Godhead. His nature is some different. What? He has lakhs and lakhs devotees everywhere. Also there are some devotees in Mathura and there have been given so much sufferings by Kans, feeling so much. From when? Devaki and Vasudev are suffering from the very day when their marriage was going to hell. Krishna was there uh, for about ten years, eight months in Braja. And from beginning of marriage, Eight sons were there with Krishna. So, so many years. And after that, ten years, eight months more. How much years? Together? About nineteen years. years. So many years. Yes, it may be. Or this or it may be like twenty years, it may be. And there was being suffered by so many persons left uh, Mathura, they scattered here and there. And those who were there were always weeping and suffering. So how Krishna can give up them? He cannot neglect. He also he should care. And if he is not take, taking care, then he is not merciful at all. Also Pandvas are weeping, Kunti is weeping for Krishna that he should come and help us. Draupadi calling him, Oh, I am now becoming sem what? semeless. And she is calling bitterly, Oh, keeping his hands, Oh, Govinda, Rākusarana, Abhata Jivanahari, now I am dying. What Krishna will do? If he is playing in Raslila, in Vrindavan, in Bansi, but what he will do? He will have to save also. Any bhakti in anywhere in this world, and he is calling Krishna. Krishna cannot do it. Otherwise, he will have to give up his name that you are bhakta vatsal, you are merciful. So he will have to take care of all. And that is why he was testing so much a rush in Vrindavan. But also he will have to look after all the devotees. So there are so many devotees in Mathura, here and there. He should also hear their call. That is why Krishna also went there, no harm. But something more. <coughs> Because Krishna has promised, Je jathang maam prapadyante tam tathayo bhajam maham. Those who are serving me, I will have to repay them in the same way. But only there are gopis that he could not keep his promise. He failed to keep his promise. For all he, he can keep his promise, but for gopis nothing. 
So, it is sure that there is no comparison of whole world's any devotees like Brajabhasi. Anyone cannot compare. Like Jasoda Mother, like Sudam Subham Subham, or others, like Gopis, Lalita Vishakha, and all others. Oh, there is no comparison. <coughs> But Devaki and Vasudev, they have also did a story, very hard a story in their past. But you know, keeping their head down, standing on one here, and taking their feet high, without any air, water, in, in hot day, in winter season. Hmm? Rainy season, always. How much? More than 60,000 years. Guru has done only how, how much? Six months without air. And he, more than 60,000 years. And now he is calling in the form of Vasudeva and Devaki. Will he not hear? He must hear. This was also a reason to come to Mathura. Hmm? Now, second thing, if Krishna finished his, that cause, he came to save his father, mother, ne? and he saved and he killed Kans. So he came to kill Krishna, a uh, Kans, and he finished this cause, then he must return to Vrindavan. But how he can? Hmm? All the Jadwashi, Mathura Bhashi has escalated here and there for the fear of. So his whole kingdom was like Vishrinkal. Vishrinkal means? It was not in order. So Krishna gave the kingdom uh, to Ugrasen Maharaj. He made him king. But he was so much old, powerless person. Krishna should manage. So he was managing. And if he is not managing, that what will be? Oh, there were two wives of Kans, Asti and Prapti. They went to hit their father, Jarasandha. He was, was very big demon like. Very powerful, more than Kans and all others, Durjodhan and all. And when he heard that oh, his son-in-law has been killed by Krishna, and he was innocent, innocent oh, all ready innocent. And this Krishna killed him. He was sitting on the throne only, and they jumped and took his and without any reason, and they killed him. He became so unhappy, serious. And he took his soldiers, more than Mahabharata soldiers, army, so much army. Twenty lakhs of crores of army he took and he invaded at uh, uh, um, 18 times, not only times, 18 times. So Krishna knows that if I am going to Braja, then what happened? All will be killed by Jarasandha. So he cannot go. Can he go? If he goes to Vrindavan time to time, that what will become? Eh? Krishna wanted to go time to time. But if Jarasandha will know that really, oh, all the Brajvasi are so beloved, so dear to Krishna, so I will mash, mash Vrindavan. There are no soldiers, no army, no killa, fort, nothing. And they are not warriors all go. Walling grazing cow, very innocent. <coughs> so in one day, Jarasin will come and smash whole Vrindavan. But Nanda Baba knows this. So Krishna told in his 
ears. Don't be restless. I will come after finishing Jarasan then all and I will come. So I must come. But if I am not coming, time to time that comes will um, they will know and they will attack whole Brijbash. And then everything will be finished. I cannot shed you. There is no fort, no army, nothing. So he is not coming. Hmm? And more things. One thing, anyone goes to any fair for any job or any for duty. Vasudev uh, knows this very clearly, Vasudev and Devaki, that Krishna has come from Vrindavan. And if Krishna returns to Vrindavan, he will never come. If anyone goes to anywhere, and Krishna tells that I am going to uh, Indra Prastha, I am going to Mithila, or I am going here and there, they will know, never object. That you should go and very quickly you should return. But if Krishna wants any permission from Devaki and Vasudev, that I want to go quickly to Vrindavan and I will return. Then they become very, very, and they began to weep, nothing telling anything, not giving permission. Why not? That Vrindavan is a Rashamai Bhumi. He is not going to finish any. Uh, eh? any karma or any job or anything and he will go and he will be totally absorbed in Russia because Vrindavan is Rush boy. Krishna is himself Rush all the gop and gopis are Rush so this is not a job not a duty not a anything so he will not return so when Krishna anyhow tells that may I go they began to be bitter. Not only they keep us, the whole Mathura Bhashi began to be that we will die today. What Krishna should do? That is why. Or oh, sometimes he wants to go but cannot go. These are the reasons. Also, if he is going there, sometimes. And only meeting with them and they, he can return because Vrindavan is only two fin fingers far away from Vrindavan, Mathura. Only. Hmm? And the place is what? Borderline. Only Mathura and Vrindavan, so near and near. Hmm? He can go to Golok Vrindavan, he go, can go to Mithila, he can go to Dwarka in a moment. And why he cannot come in hour, two hour, he can come to Vrindavan. But he is not coming. Why? Because if he is going for a moment, then what becomes? The separation mode of gopis and gops will go less and less time more. More and more. It will not subside, but it will increase so much. Why? If hmm, there is a lamp, the lamp of what? What? Lamp me kya hota hai? Flame. If there is a flame in lamp, if there is a little uh, air it can be extinguished, it can be subsided. But if the fire is so in, in so big, uh, 
No, no. Be like forest. Forest fire. Forest fire. Can it be subsided by any air or what it will be? More increasing. More increasing. Hmm. So, uh, the suppression fire of gopis and gops, what right like this? It is not like a very pradeep <laughs> that it will be subsided. Like, uh, if you can put any paw, uh, uh, sign pen on a stove and it is like a radius and give one water, what it will be? Chan. And if it will touch you or anywhere, you will be burned. So, Vrindavan, fire, this separation mood is like this. If Krishna goes for a moment, for one day, two days, it will go so high that they will die at once. So, he is not going with fear. Something also, if anyone questioning that Krishna should bring, his father, mother, all the gopis, sakha and all to Mathura. Oh, there is very broad place. Huh? He can bring them. Why he not bring them? Oh, there is something danger. What danger? Rasa Sankata. Rasa Sankata mane? There is Sankata of Rasa mane? Danger of exchanging of Rasa. Hmm? What is that? Contradiction of mellow. Ah, contradiction of mellow there. But in Vrindavan, Krishna is like a cowherd boy, only son of Nanda Baba, without shoes and without umbrella, and serving all the cows. Serving Nanda Baba Jasuda. And in Mathura, he is a Kshatriya king, very powerful. No flute, no steel, not cowherd boy, like a king. And what kind of king? Oh, he is samrat. What? Emperor. Emperor of emperor here. No one can challenge him there. Hmm? But in Vrindavan, if he comes, all Brajabasi comes, then can he keep his peacock feather here? and his flea float on his ear and like what he will tell if Nanda Baba comes then to whom he will tell father and mother to Devaki Basdue or Nanda Baba and to whom in night he will be will gopis or Satvama Rukmini there will be fight against each other also in Mathura he is Paradevata Paradevata ki Srimad Bhagavatam tell thi. Paradevata ti. He is Paradevata of all the Jadavas. Paradevata means? Vishnuinam Paradevata ti. Vishnuinam. Jadav. He is king of kings and he is worshipable of all the Mathura Vashi. But in Vrindavan, what he is? Swajan, only son of Bas um, Nanda Baba. Oh, he is only friend of, yeah. beloved of Gopis only, not Pardevata. Any Gop will not worship Krishna. Jasoda Maya na, never worship. Any Gopis, they can worship you with heart. Eh? Abuses, Kala, Black. <laughs> Like what? No. Lampata, chur, thief, black hearted. Oh, these are their worshipping. If all gopis will go and abuse like they are in Mathura, then what will happen? In front of all the Jadavas? What will be there? No solution at all. Hmm? Then? Oh, he is worshipable of all the Jadavas. 
इवन टू उद्धव अक्रूर किंग उग्रसेन एंड ऑल टू ऑल बट ही And he said, "I'm so bad. We'll climb up on his what? what? And he will. Oh, my horse! Go on, go on, go on. And he will tell eh, eh, to Krishna. Oh, quickly, 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 run. And there, if Sri Dham Subal are going in Mathura, and they will make Krishna like horses, and in the front of all the jadwas, what will be there? Can they tolerate?" That's the big problem. <laughs> oh, they are, they are even and Father Basudev, they cannot take the pranam of Krishna. Why? Oh, Krishna is supreme personality of all time. They fear. They have seen four-handed, but here in Vrindavan, oh, Nandva Balta, oh, bring my soup, my paduka, and Krishna will take on head and dancing will come. If Nand Baba is there telling, "Oh my son, oh you should bring my duty in Mathura and in front of all Jadwar heart, what Krishna will do? Will he bring? Then he will be confused on what to do. Moreover, when Krishna is with all the gopis, Lalita, Vishakhar, and all others. Hmm? Can he sit with Radhika and make rush there in Mathura in front of all Jadus? Can he message the feet of Radhika in front of them? So this is what Rashmi Jyot Satruta contradiction in manners. How Krishna can uh, reconcile all these things? So he is in dilemma, and he is not bringing anyone. Wow, Pramana. Huh? Dut wala kya bhaja? Oh, isliye. Now. Krishna is thinking. Why should I? He, he sent Uddhav. I told you that in these circumstances Krishna cannot go there. Then if he sends his many messengers to pacify their father and mother, sometimes, then he can know something and. This most important thing is that he is sending Uddha to be admitted in the school of gopis, where Lalita Vishakhar are teachers, and Shrimati Radhika himself, principal life, and Uddha should be admitted, and he should learn all these things. He can learn, but. Cannot realize. Anyhow, he should go and be admitted, and he should know only two and half letters. He cannot know uh, all swar and bhinjan. Never he cannot. Of Vrindavan, only he should read for two and a half letters. Prema. In English, no word like this. It. Love half, then it will be four. <laughs> so praying, so he send him. He should learn something about prem, and when he will be qualified, he should come so that I can give my some sufferings to him. So this messenger should be sent, not messenger, but to be qualified to know what is love and prem of Braj Prem, and he will realize something. He cannot realize more, but something he will realize, and then he will return. I can weep, and and then he will realize that why I am living, why I am suffering this. Then I can distribute my some of sufferings to him. 
Gaur Premanand. Krishna is having his devotees all over. And if he will keep on going there, then, then Brajabhasi will never have to... Never. <laughs> Don't jump, please. You cannot understand. It is in Sanskrit. Uh, then, I am saying that if Krishna will keep on going to wipe the tears of different devotees, then Brijvasi will have never their turn for Krishna. And they will oh, always break He has them. made this turn so again he will make turn. And he is his Guru Vrindavan Aprakat Leela he has. So many things. So we should begin from beginning. Bhaku Vedam Manasa Krodha Vedam Jiva Vedam Mudaro Pasna Vedam Etan Vedan Jyapi Sarese Sarvam Timam Patrisa Sashita Dadati Pratikrahna Sivishyam Altaan and so many things. Then Tannama Rupa Charita Desu Kirtana Kramena Rasana Manasi Tishthan Prajeta Dhanuragi Janan But now I am saying that all not doing that. A little bit of. We have so many books. We need your support, Maharaj. We need a general behind us. Oh, so you should. I am requesting to all the devotees that they should at least in one year at least twelve books. They should distribute. At least ten, eleven, ten, uh, twelve books, and easily you can do. Uh, one book, one month. Oh, I'm thinking sufficient. But I know that at the time of your Prabhupada, how many lakhs and lakhs books. So I think that you must take at least twelve books, more than two, and I will have to reward them. If among them who will distribute some best distributor. So you should try to do this and that. Please send this in email everywhere. Yes. And the assembled Vaishnavas, we humbly offer a dramatic presentation of part one of the Sri Brihad Bhagavatamrita by Srila Sanatan Goswami. Once, at the holy place of Prayag, many exalted munis completed their morning bath and sat down near the deity of Sri Madhava, the Brahmana king of that land accompanied by his entourage, came there, and with great respect and devotion, he worshipped Sri Shalagram Shila, and then satisfied all the munis with Maha Prashad. Sri Narada Muni, who had observed his activities from a distance, stood up in the assembly of sages and said, This Brahmana is very dear to Bhagavan Mahavishnu, then, Sri Narada, who is expert in relishing the mellows of Bhagavad Bhakti, 
in order to proclaim to the world the glories of the greatest recipients of Sri Krishna's mercy, began to glorify the king. But the king humbly rejected that praise and sent Sri Narada to another king in South India. However, that king also did not consider himself to be a great object of Sri Bhagavan's mercy and sent Narada to Lord Indra. Indra sent him to Brahma and Brahma sent him to Shiva. In this way, Sri Narada wandered throughout the universe searching for the greatest recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy. In his travels, <coughs> He also took darshan of Prahlad Maharaj, Hanuman, the Pandavas, and finally the residents of Dwarka. Hearing from the Yadavas the glory of Sri Uddhava, Narada became immersed in the ras of Mahaprem and forgot everything, even playing the veena which he held in his hand. Appearing like a man possessed by ghosts, he walked along the magnificent path leading to Sri Krishna's residence. Sometimes he danced, sometimes he fell to the ground, sometimes he cried out in ecstasy, and sometimes he cried in a distressed voice. He exhibited all the symptoms of ecstatic love simultaneously. On that day, Sri Krishna was despondent for some reason and was still sleeping in his bedroom. Sri Uddhava was seated near the doorway along with Baldev Prabhu, Sri Devakiji, Sri Rohiniji, Sri Rukmini Devi, Sri Satyabhama Devi, and all of Krishna's queens, along with Kamsa's inimical mother, Padmavati. truthful. O oh, best of the great Munis, whatever you speak is certainly true. I know this to be a fact. But when I recently went to Vrindavan, I experienced something which pulverized my pride for my own good fortune. From this I came to understand the wonderful sweetness of Sri Krishna, his mercy, his pastimes, and his beloved devotees. Upon receiving the darshan of the Brajbasis, I considered myself most fortunate. What I repeatedly sang after going there, expressing my desire to take birth there as a blade of grass, is well known to everyone. O oh, best of sages, O 
humbly bowing down, I implore you not to desire to hear that narration, which is saturated with wrath. First, because she was meaning such a bomb and others are nearby. And secondly, because if Sri Sham Sundar himself hears it, he'll be overwhelmed in Raj Dear Uddhava, best of those known as Harinas, there is no need to say more. Please. Don't revive the memory of the Brajvasis. By forgetting this memory, I have finally experienced some momentary happiness. When Sri Vasudev brought me here from Braj, Sodadevi cried so bitterly that it melted stone and shattered thunderbolts. When Sri Krishna returned from the ashram of his guru, like a fool, I briefly and sadly narrated the plight of the Brajvasis to him. But it did not melt his heart, even a little, so he did not go there. Knowing you to be expert in delivering clever messages, he sent you instead. Please listen to what I saw with my own eyes. Since Krishna arrived in Vrindavan, from the repeated attacks of demons, serpents, and other fearsome creatures, what calamity meant to destroy Braj did not occur. Still. The Brajvasis never minded, being enchanted by the sweetness of Sri Krishna. They were solely for his welfare, without a thought of their own. Due to their natural love, everything they did was exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Nandanandana. Even then, Krishna did not do anything for them. So what can I say about now? Being immensely unfortunate, the Prajvasis are submerged in an ocean of anguish. Why then do you say that they are the greatest object of your master's mercy? Alas, from childhood, Krishna was made to take the cows of those merciless cowherd men out to graze in a forest of brambles. Can you believe that they didn't even give him shoes to wear? And when tortured by hunger, just a little butter, the coward women used to tie him up. And those coward women used to constantly shout accusations at him. So tell me, what more could he possibly do for them? After killing all the yad of his enemies, Sri Krishna ruled their capital Matara. And now, he happily resides in Dwarka as the king of kings. It is very unfortunate that your master does not even remember the Brajvasis. Hey, Mother Rohini, how can you speak such words? Don't you know that his heart is softer than butter? Otherwise he would not be speaking this way. Sometimes, when he sleeps at night, he lovingly calls out the names of many cows. Sometimes, he calls out the name of many cowherd boyfriends, and he assumes an enchanting threefold bending to pose as he plays the flute. Sometimes he calls to me, Hey mother, give me some butter. And sometimes he calls to me, Hey Radhe, hey Lalite, hey Chandravani. Sometimes he sheds so many tears of love Mama. that it drenches his pillow. Seeing his sorrow, we are simply plunged in an ocean of sorrow. Last night, while he slept, he had a dream, which has made him depressed. He barely cries in anguish, covering his lotus face with a cloth. He lies there motionless, as if sleeping, and he has not performed any of his daily duties. Why do you utter such nonsense? Say that he only becomes like this at night. Even when he is awake, he is dazed and behaves just as he does when he is sleeping. We are as wise in name only. In reality, even the dossies of the Raj Gopis are more dear to him than we are. Jadies. Because we are all engaged in, in conversing about the plight of the Raj Vasis, my brother Krishna is simply exhibiting his expertise in cheating him by pretending to be afflicted. In an effort to console them, I went to Raj and stayed there for two months. But neither my words nor actions would pacify them. 
seeing that they would not be pacified without Krishna himself coming, I made them so many promises that appeased them somewhat. And on the pretext of quickly returning with my brother Krishna, with great difficulty I, ret I returned here. Arriving here, I fretfully said to Krishna, on any pretext, go to Raj just once and save the lives of the residents there. His mouth replied, I am going just now. But the thought of it never reached his heart because you can understand a person's heart by their actions. Oh, what you have said is true. Although struck by a great thunderbolt, my heart does not shatter. I have forgotten their extraordinary love for me and how they nurtured me for so long in my childhood. What to speak of being even a little benevolent towards them. Instead, I have been cruel and caused immense suffering to their soft hearts. Hey, Brother Uddhava, you know, you are most dear to me. Tell me at once, what should I do? Quickly, deliver me from this ocean of anguish. Oh, Krishna, you should give your dear friends in Raj whatever they desire. Oh, Krishna, why are you feeling such remorse? Please, listen to my advice. Sri Gargacharya will calculate every morsel of food that you two brothers ate while you ate with Nanda Maharaj for those 11 years. And my husband will give them twice that amount. I swear it. And then, according to his discretion, Nanda Maharaj will decide whether he wishes to reimburse you for looking after the cows during that time. Oh, best of scholars, you know all the aspirations of the Rajvasis. Tell me at once, what do they wish of me? The Brajbasis do not desire the opulence of kings, the celestial possessions of the residents of Swarga, or anything of this world. They only want you. Please be merciful and listen carefully to what I am saying, and you may decide for yourself what should be done. Previously, when the Brajbasis saw the clothes and ornaments which you sent back for Sri Nanda, they were plunged into an ocean of grief and said to one another, It is our great misfortune that Sri Krishna thinks that we desire these things and that giving them to us is his mercy. Then Sri Yashoda, then all the Brajbasis, thinking that you were not returning, began fasting until death. Sri Nanda, thinking he had committed an offense, became anguished and could not speak for three days. Then he concluded that the Brajbasis were certainly going to perish. So hundreds of times he repeated your promise that you would be returning soon. He told them, My son Krishna sent these articles as indications of his love for you. He is true to his word. He will return soon. But when you did not go there and sent me with a message all the Bajbasis became as if dead. My Lord, I am unqualified to speak of their love for you. To attain you, the Bajbasis have given up everything. And to know what their condition is now, ask your elder brother. My dearest ones, after completing my remaining duties and comforting my friends here, I will quickly return. Prabhu, understand this to be certain. Without the auspicious return of your lotus feet, the Brajbasis will certainly perish. They do not desire anything but you. Oh, foolish Devaki. Now, yes, now I've understood. Those cunning, coward men have bewitched Uddhava by incessantly feeding him milk. And now, with his help, they wish to take your son back to that dangerous, inaccessible forest, which is inhabited by wild beasts, just to protect their domestic animals. Oh. Hey, Mother of Kamsa, what is this about Krishna being exploited to protect the cows? 
in Bruges, there is no danger of the cows being killed or stolen, so there is no need for them to have protection. In the morning, the cows voluntarily go to the forest to eat the plentiful grass their hearts content, and automatically return to their homes in the evening. In reality, on the pretext of taking the cows to graze, Sri Krishna regularly entered those charming forests with his elder brother and cowherd friends, just to enjoy many pastimes there. When Sri Krishna would take the cows out, in separation from him, the Brajvasis considered the day to be as long as Brahma's night, and each moment to be like a yuga. Time and again, they looked at the path by which he would return, at the sun, for indications of when it would set, and for signs of dust being raised by the calf's hooves. And when the vibration of his flute was heard, they entered into a state of maddened praying. Oh, garrulous child, if that is so, then tell us, why have we now heard that for want of protection, all the cows are nearly dead? Oh, Krishna, but to speak of just the cows, your beloved deer and birds, trees, vines, and creepers, also the kunjas and grass, have given up their lives for your sake. Hey, brother, sustained by your promise and hopeful of receiving your darshan again, only a few Vrajvasis remain alive. You don't want to hear any more. If you are not kind to them now, then Yamaraj will certainly devour them all. Please, it is a matter of great sorrow to them that you removed the poison from Kaliagat, because otherwise they would have been able to give up their lives by drinking it. Please hear another cause of grief. The Amuna has very little water remaining. It is almost completely dry. Thus they are unable to drown themselves in it. Giriraj Govardhan, which you held with your lotus hand, has shrunk. Thus they are unable to give up their lives by jumping from the top of it. The Vrajvasis have given up eating it and drinking altogether. But because they still drink the nectar of your name, their lives do not leave them. Now their only destination is to be consumed by fire in that dry forest. Seeing this unprecedented spectacle of anguished crying, Rohini, Udhava, Rukmini Devi, Satyabhama Devi, and all the residents of the inner chambers became grief-stricken and cried out again and again. Hearing the sounds of weeping and distress, Sri Vasudeva, Sri Ugasena, and all the Yadavas quickly ran there. Seeing the condition of Sri Krishna and Sri Balaram, they became devastated and cried loudly. And when Gargacharya, the Brahmanas, and all the residents of the city came, they also cried in the same way. At once, the vibration of weeping of Sri Krishna and his associates pervaded the entire universe, giving birth to numerous calamities. Knowing that no one besides Sri Krishna could restore peace to the universe, Lord Brahma came there with his associates. Seeing that Maha Narayan Sri Krishna, tormented by love for his dearest devotees, had fallen into an unprecedented condition, he could understand that the Lord was now anxious to manifest the hidden glories of the sweetness of his devotees' prema for him. Carefully composing himself, Brahma called Garuda and told him, Nearby, between Mount Raivata and the ocean, Vishvakarma constructed a Sri Vrindavan, which is adorned with murtis of Sri Nanda, Yashoda, the residents of Braja, and many cows. 
It is so splendorous that it seems to be the Sri Vrindavan which is situated in Mathura Mandala. While Sri Krishna and Baladev are in this condition, please carefully take them there. Take Rohini Devi also, but no one else. Then, Ramaji helped the residents of Dwarka to regain their composure and sent them to their own places. Unable to leave Krishna while he was in that unconscious state, Uddhava, Devaki, and the queens headed by Rukmini and Satyabhama and Padmavati also went there. But at the request of Brahma, they stood at a distance and watched from a hidden position. Considering himself an offender due to having made Sri Krishna faint, Narada did not enter there. Instead, attired like a yogi, he remained hidden in the sky from where he could witness the sweetness of Bhagavan's Leela. Then, Sri Baladev regained consciousness and understood Brahmaji's intention. He wiped Sri Krishna's as well as his own lotus face gently placed a garland of kadamba flowers around his neck, a flute in his lotus hands, and a peacock feather in his crown. Hey Krishna, hey brother, arise, arise. Wake up and see, it is late. The cows have already left for the forest, and overcome with affection, your parents cannot even speak. Hey Krishna, get up. Hey, Mother, this morning I have seen many peculiar dreams, which all seem so real. I went to Mathura and killed Kamsa. I had a great palace named Dwarpa constructed on the shore of the ocean. And I cannot quickly describe to you all the rest. Due to these long enchanting dreams, which seemed like ages, I was unable to rise at the usual time. Hey, Brother. If you will not consider a lie, when we go to the forest, I will tell you in detail about these highly astonishing dreams. <laughs> oh, child, because you are our only son, today your mother is very worried because you slept so long. Your cows and sockets have gone far ahead. You should quickly follow them to the forest. I will prepare your lunch and send it. Thank you, Mother. Please send my name, Daniel. <laughs> oh, Queen of my life, why do you not speak? Are you feeling jealous today? <laughs> Knowing everything, you have ascertained what I saw in my dreams. Yes, now I understand. You must know that I left you, went to another place, and married many princesses. But please, listen to the reason for it. They were extremely anxious to get married, and if I had not fulfilled their desires, they would have certainly perished. I also had many children to marry. What has happened, happened. Now I must put the person into the forest. Tonight we shall meet again. <laughs> <laughs> When Devaki saw Sri Krishna going along, playing his flute, and dressed in his enchanting forest attire, none of which she had ever seen before, out of love milk began to flow from her breast. Seeing him like this for the first time, the queens, headed by Rukmini and Jambavati, became bewildered by Mahaprema and fainted. Overcome with amorous desire, Satyabhama, and old Padmavati tried to run after Krishna to embrace him. But Sri Kalindi, who had seen Krishna like this before, carefully kept her composure and along with Sri Uddhava forcibly pulled them back. Oh, Sakas, where have you gone? Hey, Sridham, Subal, come to the bank of the Yamuna. The cows can 
drink the pure sweet water, and then we will enjoy water sports. Gods, you have descended to remove the earth's burden. Therefore, please annihilate the demons, protect the saintly persons, and perform the sacrifice of your cousin. You made you destroy the emperor, and by your prowess, you frightened the demons headed by Anusalva. Now, please take the Yadavas there and kill those who, out of enmity for you, torment your devotees. Hearing these words of Sri Baladev, which were meant to help him regain his composure and bring him to a different ras, that of heroism, Sri Krishna's mood changed. Due to having become aware of this topic, he abandoned his previous state of being spellbound in separation. Then Krishna saw the flute in his hand and remembered that he had just left his home to take the cows out to graze. Thus he became simultaneously wonderstruck and doubtful and began laughing. Then Sri Baladev smiled and told him how and why Brahmaji had arranged everything. Hey brother, who is this demoniac younger brother of Solva? Alone, I will go there now and kill him. Sri Baladev Prabhu then cleansed the dust from Sri Krishna's limbs and had him bathe in the ocean. Then Garuda came there and brought Krishna back to his palace. Sri Uddhava, Rukmini Devi, and the other queens, but having come back to consciousness, returned to the inner chambers of Sri Krishna's residence. Upon witnessing this bob from a distance, the senile and wicked Padmavati said, O oh, impious Devaki, O oh, unfortunate Rukmini, O oh, lonely queens headed by Satchavama, seeing this, you must now surely renounce your pride and perform austerities to take birth and become maidservants of the coward girls. Hearing these words, Sri Devaki replied, O oh, half-witted Padmavati, what is so astonishing about this? In our previous lives, Vasudeva and I performed austerities to attain Sri Bhagavan as our son. But Nanda and Yashoda prayed for Krishna Bhakti and to love Krishna as their son. Therefore, it is most proper that he has this type of bhav towards them, and that bhav is also dear to me. Then, Sri Rukmini joyfully said, The gopi's prem is superior to ours because, although we are fortunate enough to be his wives. We are engaged in activities relating to our dharma, karma, children and homes, and we serve him with awareness of his majesty and opulence, whereas the gopis serve him solely and with pure bhav. To attain Krishna, they have abandoned everything, even their husbands, and they are indifferent to the pleasures of this world or the next. Therefore, we should not be envious of them. Rather, we should praise that bhav which brings Sri Krishna under the control of his devotees. All the other queens approved of these words, but Sri Satchabama could not tolerate them and fled to the chamber of jealous love. Bring that foolish princess here at once. Oh, narrow-minded daughter of Satyajit, just as you have become jealous many times before, such as when Rukmini received the Parijata flower, now you are jealous 
Upon seeing the pinnacle of preem, which the Vrajbasis possess for me. If I were to go there now, I do not see that it would be for their welfare. Upon seeing me, their intense love would overflow, and in great distress they would become spellbound. What to speak of forgetting their bodies? They would forget their very selves. Their suffering would not be lessened on seeing me. Even whatever activities I could perform for their happiness would merely double their agony because they would be in constant fear of being separated from me again. Indeed, I am not able to repay my debt to them, and therefore I am a great debtor. Not seeing me now, sometimes being afflicted by the burning fire of separation, they become, they become like corpses, and sometimes, being maddened, they experience various sweet bobs. Oh, proud and jealous girl, when I separated from the Dredge Gopis, I had no desire to marry. But when, from the hand of a Brahmana, I received a pathetic letter saying that if I did not accept her, she would give up her life. I snatched her away from those wicked kings. When, from seeing her, intense remembrance of the gopis comes to me, I become anguished. Hey, Satyabhama, I thought that by marrying all of you, who were similar in number to the Vraj gopis, my heart would be somewhat pacified. But know for certain that my great happiness and glory have not accompanied me here. Abandoning me, they have both remained in Drudge, which is the only qualified place for them. Alas, it is very regrettable that not only are the blissful pastimes which I enjoyed there not possible here. I cannot even describe them. Hearing that by continuing to glorify the Vajabhasis in this way, Sri Krishna would again be overwhelmed by that bhav. Sri Uddhava inspired the queens to come closer by giving a hand signal. Then Rukmini Devi, along with Satyabhama Devi and all the queens, grasped Sri Krishna's lotus feet, and offering sincere prayers while shedding tears gradually pacified their husband. Dear Narda, 